For the Super Robot Wars 31st Anniversary, Super Robot Wars 30 will be releasing its third and final DLC update. After a little over four months of silence, this game will be going out with a bang, and the rest of the leaked DLC units will be releasing all at once, and not split into third or fourth DLC packs like we initially thought. This update includes some debuts, some specially designed units, the story expansion, and much more, so let's get into this overview. Let's start out with the new series being added. First up is Armor Trooper Votums. When looking at the datamine list in the beginning, and how they treated the high new Gundam, I kind of expected them to give us the same scope dog we got in Super Robot Wars T, or rehash the burglary dog from Z3, but we got a real treat for this DLC. In addition to Chiriko's last red shoulder unit, a brand new unit designed by Kunio Okoara, which looks to be a kind of ultimate scope dog, is being added. It has tons of weapons on it like the burglary, a rocket pack on top, some shoulder cannons, minigun on the side. But the coolest addition to me is the pile bunker on its left arm with the claw. A pile bunker is very fitting for the scope dog. In the series, Shako's unit had a pile bunker on its shield. With all of these new additions, I think this scope dog is my favorite design. I always like ultimate type units. Also, the markings on its shoulder and lower armor plate are Gilgamesh riding for 30. Thanks to D180223 and the Majin Senkai on Twitter for pointing this out. Very cool detail. Next up is the classic, Dan Kuga, Super Beast Machine God. Like Votums for this DLC, I expected Final Dan Kuga again. Also like Votums for this DLC, it's a specially designed unit by Masami Obari for Super Robot Wars 30, the ultimate Dan Kuga. The design has a much more modern feel to it, quite a bit of detail in the frame. The crest on the chest is a nice touch. Not much more to say about it, haven't seen Dan Kuga since Z2 Part 2, so this is a nice return. Next is Majestic Prince Genetic Awakening. This is the movie sequel to the TV series, so having it as DLC makes sense. We get the Red 5 Plus, the updated version of the Red 5 for Izuru, along with a new attack for Blue 1 called Full Burst Mode. We should also be seeing White Zero too, the prototype unit the MJP units are based on. Now for the big one everyone is talking about, Get a Robo Devolution, the last three minutes of the universe. This is the most wild inclusion out of any of the DLCs in my opinion, other than Ultraman I guess. Which is funny I say that, because both are created by Eiichi Shimizu and Tomohiro Shimoguchi. Getter Robo Devolution is a manga by them, based off Kenny Shikawa's Getter Robo. Right off the bat, they completely nailed the manga style. These guys look incredible with their portraits. Shimizu was heavily involved with its inclusion, not only giving his blessing, but also going as far as to do the voice casting. He casted Yukikaji as Ryoma, who you may know as Amata from Aquarian Evil, Yoshimasa Hosoya as Hayato, who you may know as Orga from Iron Blooded Orphans and Natsuki Hanai as Benkei, who you may know as Biscuit, also from Iron Blooded Orphans. Shimizu even composed the BGM for Get a Robo Devolution himself, which is incredible to me. Shimizu and Shimoguchi had some quick things to say about their inclusion. I'm so happy about this. I never thought I'd see the day Get a Robo Devolution made it into a Super Robot Wars game. They even let me compose its combat BGM. It's like the Getter Rays themselves are guiding me. The moment this update goes live, I'll be launching it into Save the Planet's future, so that I can fully upgrade Devolution Getter 3 and give it the royal treatment. I can't believe both Ultraman and Getter Robo Devolution made it in. Shimizu and I watched the completed battle animations together, and we were thrilled at their attention to detail. I'm also truly grateful to the voice cast for humoring all of our unreasonable requests. Despite how you feel about Get a Robo Devolution, the amount of passion that went into this is wholesome, and I can't wait to see the interactions between the Devolution cast and Get a Robo Armageddon's. Devolution Getters 2 and 3 are also going to be available. Next is Shinkalion, the 2019 movie. I am actually unfamiliar with the series, and upon doing some research, there's quite a bit of media in the past four years for it. A 2018 anime series, the 2019 movie which is being included here, a game, and another anime from 2021 that ended last month in March. The toy line is a Takara Tomi one, which you may know from the Brave series that Takara was involved with before merging with Tomi. Quite a long series, one that I'll have to check out myself, much like 30 did for the Ultraman anime for me. 
I actually expect some good Cow Guy Gar and Jay Decker interactions for Shinkali in here, mainly because of the whole train thing. And last but not least, the OG inclusion, which is Sanger and Ratzel in the Daiken Gar and the Austin Cider. Other than the Datamine leak, their portraits were already in the game files, along with the other DLC OG characters. From the trailer, it looks like they're one unit in the mounted formation. These two are in the top five of my favorite OG characters, so this is a welcome inclusion. All I can hope for from this is the Trombe override, you guys know. Getting into the expansion pack content, we have a new difficulty setting called Super Expert Plus. 20 area missions, 25 onboard missions, 10 playable units, 3 added attacks, Blue One, the SRX, and the Huckbind 30th. This will add story missions to finish the buildup we had in the base game, giving us the true final boss of the game. Super Expert Plus is explained as follows. Enemies are even stronger than in Super Expert mode. While your side is much more restricted in how much they can power up, you need more experience to level up, upgrades cost a lot more, and repeatable missions are off the table, along with other changes. You will earn 10 new and very potent power parts over the course of your playthrough, and you can carry these parts over to the other game modes after clearing the game. You cannot change difficulty mid-game in this mode. We recommend playing on New Game Plus. The specifics are unclear at this time, so we'll see how Super Expert Plus shapes up in terms of difficulty. I'm very interested in the 10 new parts. Hopefully they can help some of the other units breach that 1 million damage barrier that only, as far as I've been able to test, Gold 4 has been able to do. If they can, expect a compilation video of various units doing over 1 million damage. Some final thoughts. They did say final update, but I'd wager throughout the rest of the year we'll get one or two more free updates in the same vein as Gilliam. Especially if Super Robot Wars 30 reaches 1 million sales across the board. I bet they will do a special update for that. My hope is that since the DLC is finally done and the game is finished, more people will pick it up. As far as I know, the game has sold over 600,000, but this was months ago. So perhaps it is close to 1 million now. I'll touch on the free update that's also coming out at the same time. An extra chapter with stages to get Erm and the Grungust, and one to get the Van Ein from Cross Omega. Also, they're releasing the pre-order bonuses for everybody, the SRX and Cybuster, and the Spirit of Blade, Shot, and Power missions for some good parts. In any case, let me know what you guys think of the final update in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. If you're new to the channel and enjoy Mecha, consider subscribing as this channel is dedicated to it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.